and girls, welcome to Burlington's Varsity Field and Burlington Cable Access Television presentation of Red Devil Football. Yes, the voice you hear right now is the one and only, introducing myself as the only Dan Brothers in town. Thank goodness for that, as I've returned from my voyage, my, my, my maiden voyage for 2019. Joe Vichione has been filling in admirably from what I'm told, and tonight a very, very interesting matchup. You have the Red Devils and the Wildcats of Wilmington coming west. Two teams right now, Burlington two and one, Wilmington one and two. Teams that are very, very much similar the way they approach the game. Well, it's great to have you back, Dan, first. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Give me an hour, you might, might be saying that. <laughs> and both teams, as you said, it, they approach the game very similar. It all starts with the run game from both teams. We have Jake Doherty on one side of the football. Last game, 268 yards, 9.6 yards per carry. They rely, they, uh, excuse me, rely very much on the trenches and getting that run game going. And across the other side of the turf, number 42, Peter Marino, the star tailback, also has the same responsibilities. Now to the kickoff. Well, if on the uh, kickoff, it goes to the up guy, the up guy for Burlington. Ryan O'Halloran. Yeah, Ryan O'Halloran. Now, obviously, right then and there, Lex, uh, correction, Wilmington looking to keep the ball away from Burlington's deep guys who have had a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. If I was to sit there and look at this quick snapshot, I think we have Old Miss, the Burlington in their Old Miss uniforms, playing the Carolina Panthers in white. Yeah, a change of uniforms for the Red Devils this year, trying to bring up the morale after the one in 10 season that was last year. And they've done a pretty good job to start the season at four and one. And we spoke about it before the Red Devils coming into this with their last two victories, only allowing 14 points, a great margin for their whole team. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Kyle Pena, the junior quarterback, has certainly come on. And guess what? We talked about big points tonight. And there goes Doherty, like you said. He's gonna go 53 yards and the Devils are up six nothing after one snap on offense. Did that just happen, Dan? <laughs> one play, one play. I'm going home. <laughs> Incredible blocking by the guard, Johnson Magata on the pull and Doherty just gets that crease outside and takes it to the house. Where's that he button? is electrifying. If Staples was sponsoring this, we'd be hitting the easy button. Huh. Six nothing, just 14 seconds into the contest. And boy, if you coach McKay, you could not have drawn that up any better. Yeah, well, if I'm McKay, this reminds me a lot of the game versus the Buccaneers. Bedford at the start of the season, when Doherty rushed for over 400 yards and four touchdowns, and already it's starting off just like that. Well, Jake if one Doherty thing, with tons of confidence. If one thing could go bad, it just did. Cam Wheelock was wide left on the extra point. And as I like to say, as the team come back up field with 10:46 on the Goaches Insurance scoreboard, Burlington on top, six nothing. I mean, we we talk about, uh, you know, you talk about Wilmington with the number of points allowed. I think that Burlington's offense is really going to challenge them tonight. Yeah, Burlington already catching them off guards, and Dan and I. We spoke about this before the game that Wilmington has allowed a league low nine points per game in their contest, and already they allow this big touchdown run by Doherty. It will be interesting to see what their approach is. Maybe they forgot to watch film this week on number one. Well, now they flip the field. Wheelock has the ball on the tee, back deep for Wilmington is number nine, and that is uh, Benoit, as Brother Brian Brothers on the PA, so uh, adeptly said, Connor Benoit along with number 49. Well, I think it's 40, no, 43. That's Bailey Smith who has it, picks up and drops it, tries to go to the right, and he's wrapped up there by number seven. And that Jake is McCauley. Jake McCauley for the Devils and Wilmington on offense, first down and 10. And it's good to see the Red Devils special teams unit kind of catching a break on that play. We've seen as their offense and defense have been pretty balanced this year. Special teams has been an issue when it comes to tackling the returner. So far, they get lucky after the drop by Benoit. So it's first and 10 for the Cats, as they like to be called. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. The quarterback is wearing number three, Andrew Sullivan. On the inside handoff, you talked about him earlier. Marino tries to go left, doesn't get a whole lot, grabbing a couple where he's wrapped up there by number 46, Nick Campbell from his linebacker position. Yeah, Campbell's had a big year so far, filling in for Sean McGilvery early on when he had that ankle injury. I think he's back in the lineup. Nonetheless, Campbell's really provided some juice to that Mike linebacker role and has been able to really been adept on first and second down when it comes to making the tackles. One thing that drives me crazy is watching uh, players get plays from the sideline. I mean, uh, you know, the quarterback's got to run over there every time. Come on, coach. You've been doing this too long. 
Out of the gun now, inside handoff. It goes to number 41, I believe that was. That's a Stefan Smolinski. Yeah, Smolinski having nowhere to go there. Great job by the Burlington interior defensive line. And, Dan, that's going to be a huge part of this game. If you can control the line of scrimmage, especially from the middle, from your nose tackle and three technique spots, respectively, that can have a huge impact on first and second down and stopping the run and forcing third and long situations. I think that may have been Marino who made the call. But nonetheless, he got two. It'll be third down. And let's call it an exact five. That, that, that sticks right in the middle. Third and five. Wilmington, two receivers out here to the near side left. The single setback on the play action over the middle. It's complete to number 81, Kyle Kenyon. He's got a step on the receiver, and he's gone. Touchdown, Kenyon. And that one went for about 74 yards. And you talked about defense in the, in the head of the contest. This might be about offense tonight. Yeah, this could be a shootout. Now let's go back to that play there. It seemed like the Red Devils defense got completely fooled and turned around. I believe the man in coverage was Ryan O'Hower and seemed like he was just a, uh, a step or two late on that one. They sold out really for the run and well, <laughs> Wilmington made them pay early as both teams get a pair of big plays to start out this game and it could be a shootout. We might hit big numbers on the, uh, on the yardage boy, bo board as well. 74 yards on the catch and run on the pass from Sullivan to Kenyon. And now on to attempt the extra point is number 36, Adam Bishop. Slow developing, kick is up, and it's good. Nine minutes and 12 seconds and 13 points into today's contest. The coaches insurance scoreboard shows Wilmington now on top by a score of seven to six, and that all happened quick. I just got to say, Dan, is it too late to take back my score prediction? Can <laughs> I up it about 10 or 15 points? Nobody's ever going to know. We said that off the air. In case you're wondering, Joe said 34-22, and I said 33-28. And unfortunately for our friends from Wilmington, we both predicted Burlington was going to win. Yeah. But so Burlington's on the downside now. And it was weird to see Wheelock miss his first extra point of the season that wasn't a block. He got a, his extra point blocked versus the Buccaneers in the first game of the season. He has been very consistent and shown the ability to kick it downfield. He certainly had the leg on that one. It just missed a yeah. little bit wide to the left. So Bishop has the ball on the tee. You've got uh, Pinkham back deep. Again, they squib it. And it's going to roll out of bounds about the 21-yard line. Flags fly everywhere. And it'll be decision time for Coach McKay what he wants to do speaking to the uh, side judge and Dan a lot of this is going to come down to for special teams wise for the Red Devils is it seems like the Wildcats are not kicking it back toward the, towards their electrifying yeah. return man Jake Doherty we saw him early in the year he had one punt return for a touchdown and one kick return for a touchdown since then teams have strayed away from kicking it to him and just gone with squibs and right. so far the Devils are amounting with pretty good field position regardless uh, you know, it always draw you know if you're going to do that, you might as well onside kick it. Maybe they'll fumble it. Yeah. You know, if you're going to kick it 20 yards, why not kick it 10? I, I um, as I sit there and, and watch this, I, I just sit there and say, well, okay, you don't want to kick it to, to, to number four. Actually, Culhane's back now, along with Pinkham. Darty's not back on this punt, uh, kickoff formation. So if that be the case, I'll hit now. Oh no, what they've done is, you see, they flipped him. They moved Darty up. We'll see if Bishop's going to kick the ball deep on this one. My guess is he might. Well, on the ground. Right to Doherty. Right to Doherty. And Doherty quickly is uh, covered up there and knocked down to the ground. Uh, leading the way for the Wildcats was number 43, Bailey Smith. The Devils will back on offense at their own 39-yard line, first down and 10. So fantastic field position, as we talked about. Special teams is going to play a big factor in this game. And already the Red Devils, it shows you having number one Doherty on your team can really amount you to some great field position and start this drive off very well. Uh, so it's first and 10 from the 39 yard line. And now a single setback is Doherty behind Pena out of the gun. Receivers everywhere. Here's the handoff left side to Doherty. Sign of the same play they ran for the touchdown. Not to be fooled twice, the number 41 for the Wildcats, Steven Smolinski on the stop. A gain of two, second down and eight. Yeah, Wilmington was all over that play there. Doherty trying to go with the same play that 
saw him go for a big yardage gain in the touchdown earlier in last drive. None of the less, the Red Devils blocking assignments really fell apart there. Only picking up a couple yards. Second down and eight, handing off again to Doherty. He goes left side, tends to like that, and he's out and very close to the first down. It's gonna be a shy of about a yard. Number 54 on the stop for the Wildcats is Dean Nally, third down and one. And it's gonna be interesting to see the play calling from Coach Dan McKay in this game. If he's gonna to wanna to continue to drain the clock out with these runs and have trust in his running back, Doherty, in this offensive line, it will be a sight to see. Third time Doherty, third time left side, third time big yardage. And he busted into Wilmington territory where he's brought down by Jordan Alatilu. Alatilu! Well, Mike. <laughs> My question was just answered right there. McKay showing full confidence in his feature back, Doherty. Great block up the middle by number seven, Jake McCauley, the fullback, just leading to that open running lane for Doherty, and he took it the rest of the way. They're Great. really high on Andrew Woods, and they've run four times behind them for a bunch of yards. This time, Doherty goes a little bit closer to the center. Smolinski came up, make the stop. It's going to be a gain of about a half a yard to be second down. We're going to call it a long nine. And Dan, that's the problem when you run a lot of these counters and power plays for the Red Devils. You either go and pick up a lot of extra yardage or it could fall for nothing. So the Red Devils need to be careful of what they wish for. But so far in this game, their runs have been spectacular. Again, here's the play action phase. Pena, I don't know if he missed a handoff. Something didn't look right there from the start. Uh, Joseph DeMonico was in the backfield for the Wildcats to make the stop, but something just didn't look right from the get-go. Yeah, it seems like Pena kind of slipped on the handoff to Jake Doherty and kind of had to take it himself up the middle on the quarterback keeper. I saw him eyeing downfield for Ryan O'Halloran. None of the less, he's gonna be tackled behind the line of scrimmage, forcing a third and long. Third down, we're gonna call it 12. Our crew over there on the, on the uh, our crew is over there. Back to pass, Pena rolling right, looking for McCauley. A correction, yeah, looking for McCauley. Threw it at his feet, quite hadn't made the move, and now it's fourth down, and this deep into uh, the territory of the Wildcats. I don't think there's any doubt that the Devils will be going for it on this one here. Into the game comes number 16, Sean Pinkham, so. Do we yeah. have a name for Pinkham and Pinkham? Are they both out there? Yeah, an extra receiver for the Red Devils, and that's definitely going to show the confidence of this unit. They're going to run a draw. Watch. Nope. Pena straight back to pass. Here comes the rush. Going to throw it out here. Almost intentional grounding, but nonetheless, it was fourth down. So it falls incomplete, and Wilmington holds and takes over and downs. You talked about the nine points a game. This kind of might be the Patriot method where, you know, give a little bit to get a lot. Wilmington holds on Burlington's second offensive series. Exactly, and you got to go back and talk about the pressure that they've put on Pena so far. We saw it on the early downs with Joseph DeMonico, and then back there on fourth down, it seemed like the running back, Jake Doherty, missed the key block on his man, and Pena just had to throw it out of bounds. So that pressure is going to be a key part of this ball game. Sullivan now inside handoff to Peter Marino. He bounces it to the right, and he's brought down there by number 21, Ryan O'Halloran. But it gets a very sizable gain out to about the 30, let's see where they're gonna put the ball down, 36 yard line, picking up about seven second down and three. And one of the Red Devils' biggest issues so far this year, it hasn't been with stuffing the run up on the interior. Their defensive tackles have done a fantastic job in that department. It's really Friend, been- Friends of Joe, <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's really been their outside linebackers at closing off those edges and sealing the run. It's something they'll have to improve upon today. Marino, once again, he's the workhorse for Wilmington. And he's out and he has himself a first down just shy of the 40 yard line. Well, right there, uh, the Wildcats lowering the shoulder and picking up the first down as they've been fairly confident in their running game so far. Not too many pass attempts from this Wildcat front. Not known for their high caliber offense. Coming into here with a three and two record. Well, they've played some tough football games. Um, you know, they lost it by a field goal at the buzzer, more or less, against well, Melrose. Ooh, that didn't look good. <laughs> Marino in the backfield is eaten up by Andrew Woods. 
Big number 77 making his presence known on that one. It's great to see Andrew Woods make a tackle up the middle, a guy that's recovered from two ACL tears and an MCL injury, already making his presence felt up the middle, just swiping by the guard and getting to the running back. And that's those difference-making type of plays that the Red Devils need to get used to and need to make early in the drives. I have one word to help him out. Golf. <laughs> Won't be too popular in Burlington by saying that, but... I don't know about that. Pretty successful golf team from <laughs> oh, the high school, I know to that. say myself. Golf's the best sport in, 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 in high school, by the way. We'll have we'll talk about that in a second. Here's the jet sweep on the... Uh, I don't know if we call that a handoff or a pass as uh, Connor Benoit comes right to left. He only gained about a yard. It'll be third down at about 11. And number 52, Tommy Spilgoon is the right defensive end. Read that play straight from the, from the beginning, blowing up into the backfield and really causing some disruption, allowing his linebacker to come over and make the tackle. And that's going to bring up a third and 11 to see what this Wildcat offense can bring to the table. So they spread out a little bit. The lone set back to the left of Sullivan. Here's Marino, back to pass, screen set up. Oh, it was tipped by Johnson Magata. Johnson Magata. And Magata already making his presence felt. He's been doing a great job clogging the running lanes. And they're almost getting his hands on one. I'll tell you, it would be great to see a big man interception like that Minnesota Vikings game with Linval Joseph Linval running Joseph it down the sideline. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> Highlight of my week. <laughs> And if Magata could catch Are you guys, are you guys too that. young to say Hakuna Magata? No, forget it. You, you are. Lion King. Hakuna. Oh, okay. Hakuna Matata, how about Hakuna Magata? I will say, Joseph's run back wasn't as good as the Dan Connolly run back by the left guard. Remember that from the Patriots? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, the, uh, on the swim kick. Yeah. <laughs> Almost got into the end zone. And you know what they said? And he got to the end zone. They went out and listened to him all week. Yeah. You know, the amazing part about that, you talk about Dan Carley, he had the ball wrapped up. There was no way on God's green earth. Oh, he, he was, was holding on to that like a newborn <laughs> baby. He was like, I am not letting go of that. <laughs> so the punt by the Wildcats goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line, and Burlington goes back off on offense. The first down and 10, 405 left here in a kind of a deliberate first quarter of play. I wouldn't call it quick, quick as far as pace goes, but... Not slow either. Both teams' defense is really coming on to put on a show, trying to slow down this periphery. Here's the handoff to Doherty. He gets through, but not all the way. As number 81, Kyle Kenyon grabbed him and brought him to the turf after a game of about four, second down and six. So Doherty continuing to show that confidence and take it up the middle between the tackles. He's been a great player when you have him run up the center. As he's really an agility back, but you know, when I see him across the halls over at Burlington High School, he doesn't look like a big guy, but he really carries that bulk well and can run it up the middle. Here's Doherty again, right side this time as number 54. And that's a Dean Nally wraps him up. There's a flag on the play. I believe I saw one fly in. Yep, there it is over on the carpet. In the area of it looks like it's going to be holding. We'll have to wait and see what the call is from our referee tonight, Chris Clemente. Also known as Phil O'McGiffin. <laughs> Dan, you're pretty fond of some of the referees here. <laughs> some hey, of your the partners brother, in the, the brothers of black and white. It's holding against Burlington. They're going to march it off the second down and 16. I believe the hold was on the left tackle, Andrew Woods, there, who grabbed the right defensive end. That's going to be a 10 yard penalty, unfortunately, for the Red Devils. 53 degrees at game time tonight, and it might be a little bit more chilly right now. Both of us got jackets up here in the booth in case we're gonna need them. Joe already has his on, airing it out, and it's incomplete. That Coach McDonald running down the sideline? <laughs> you know, that was a great pass to run down like, the field. I like Kevin McDonald's gonna catch that ball. Yeah, if, if Ryan O'Hower and <laughs> caught it a little bit to the right of himself towards the out of bounds. It seems like Madonna would have carried that ball along the sideline just like Dan Connolly himself. Well, but, <laughs> but going back to that play, Ties Dan, all in, right? <laughs> but going back to that play, it was a great route run by Ryan O'Hower and had was, double coverage, but seemed like Pena just missed him by a couple yards behind. If that was one more yard laid out, we would have said good night in our second score. 
give, and give credit to Joseph DeMonaco. He was step for step with O'Halloran. I was going to say, it was a well-designed play, a well-thrown play, and a well-defended play as we go over the middle, and it's caught by O'Halloran. Away from number nine, Benoit, and he's headed to the goal line, touchdown! Play of the game candidate, Ryan O'Halloran, run after catch specialist. What a completion from him and taking it to the house. 70 yards on the catch and run from Pena as he hit him on a crossing pattern over the middle. And O'Halloran caught the ball about the 45 yard line and did the rest with his feet. The Devils go up on top 12-7. And Ryan O'Halloran, after that last ball falling incomplete, having the confidence in himself, running a great route across, across the middle of the field in double coverage and scoring the touchdown as Wheelock well, I'll tell you what, no good again. It's just that we got the Joe Vish uh, uh, kiss of death here tonight. You know, he talked about how Wheelock hadn't missed a kick until that wasn't blocked uh, until tonight. And now he's missed two in a row. So the kick is no good. Teams come back upfield. 2.49 left. As I say, the Ghost's Insurance scoreboard, you can see Ghost's Insurance right off to the right of us up top. And the Devils are on top by a score of 12 to 7. And just for an FYI, sir. That keeps my 33 to 20 to uh, 33 28 score intact. By the way, whatever you say, Dan. <laughs> I still have a chance for my prediction as well. What was yours? 34. 34 to 22, I believe. That means you have to have two two-point conversions. I know. Okay. I got you. You're on. We'll see how this falls at the end of it. Watch it be a shootout, a, one of those classic games, 45 to 42. And we've had some classics throughout the years, you know, and we're reminiscing. Uh, we'll get to that, that at the break. And here's Wheelock. End over end, high and deep. It comes down to Marino at his own five. Out to the 20 with some room. Flag gets thrown in the middle somewhere by the umpire. Yeah, looks This one's like... gonna come back a little bit, but Marino, just as you mentioned, shootout. Yeah, looked to be a block in the back there as Marino nonetheless with a now, can Great I make return. my... Now you say Go that ahead, I'm, Dan. You say that I'm a Go bleed, ahead. You can say that I'm a bleeder of the black and white, but that drives me crazy because... Holding, rather. It, it's a holding penalty, but it's 20 yards away from where the run was. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're going to march it off to 10 yards, and they're going to start back at their own 25, but if you look where the flag was thrown, Marino was off to the right outside the numbers. Yeah, it was pretty much gone already. It's very frustrating to see in that scenario and you also got to give the player a call for that one too why would you hold in that scenario when he's already passed and the again, play I agree on both counts so it's first and ten Wildcats probably doesn't want to hear too much from his coach on film saying make that block man <laughs> here's Sullivan hands off to number 42 and that's Peter Marino and Marino gets out to the 27 yard line a pickup of two second down we're going to call it eight tackle made for the Devils by Sean McGilvery. So Sean McGilvery coming over to make that tackle. He is a mean, no, mean nose, rough linebacker that the Red Devils really need. In the first two games of the season, he was down with an ankle injury. Good to see him back in the lineup and already making his presence felt early in the ball game. This is my problem. It's past my bedtime, I think. <clears throat> I don't think you're that old yet, Dan. <laughs> Can I, can I quantify it? Go ahead. I'm probably older than your parents. <laughs> I'll give you that. Here's number 81, Kenyon. He had the big reception. Kept a short pass there. And number seven, Jake McCauley on the stop as he gets out to about the 31-yard line, 31 31-yard line where it'll be third down and three. And the Wildcats are gonna face a third and short here. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do as they've gone very well when it comes to running the football. However, these past two downs have not proved itself. Third and three, the handoff to Marino, right side with a room and a first down. And Marino picking up the first down, showing that confidence. And it seems like the Red Devils, as we talked about it, Dan, I don't want to be too much of a uh, critic, but that <laughs> That's your job tonight, the, though. <laughs> the nickelback. Uh, Defensive formation already providing problems for this defense. When you take that linebacker out of there, 
it's really tough to make a tackle and stop number, the run. Number 52, Tommy Splagunius. Tommy Splagunius. I'm going to say Splagunius. Go ahead, Dan. IAS. I was a Fanex for, oh, tell you what. What a great might be arguing tackle. about how to say Tommy's name, but I'll tell you what, Luke Lord, we know how to say, huh. the Lord has spoken. And he stops him in the backfield. The Lord has spoken. <laughs> Luke Lord, great play behind the line of scrimmage. And already this Red Devil unit having some big plays up front. We might get in trouble with the separation of church and state <laughs> by saying that one there. But Luke Lord with a big play setting up a second down. Let's call it 12. I get sidetracked once in a while, as you can tell. Yeah. But you know what? The great job by Chris Flaherty and crew. Rob made it here tonight. We always like when Rob shows up. Except his predictions aren't good on television, but we don't talk about that. Here's the pass, a flag coming out. <coughs> As number 24 for the Wildcats, Stephen Anthony got his legs tied up with Ryan O'Halloran. And when the ball is thrown and there's some people who get tripped up and the flag comes out, you know it's going to be against the offense. Yeah, it looked to be... They're going to call it holding. Okay. The result of the play will be an automatic first down. It's unfortunate for the Red Devils as it was pretty obvious something went on there. It seems like Anthony was stepped on a banana peel. Well, okay, I was going to say, that was about a nine-yard holding walk-off. Yeah. Should be a five-yard penalty automatic first down. Well, you can as tell there. it's getting a little bit cooler now because the crowds are a little smaller and they're a little quieter. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, Dan. I'm just glad there's no baby powder going, throwing up in the stands. Oh, they're doing and, that? Oh, Stoneham was doing oh, that, Oh, they're right? still doing that. Uh, you know what? I kind of liked it. Here's the double inside handoff, Kenyon. Oh. I'm going to tell you, that, that didn't look good from the start, and the, and the Lord has spoken again. Yeah, great tackle for loss there, and it seemed like Kenyon just kind of bobbled that snap at the beginning of it, yeah. kind of lost his focus, and that resulted in a big tackle for loss. And so the first quarter has come to a close. A quarter that saw 19 points. The Devils scoring 12 of them. Wilmington seven after one. It's 12-7. You know, we sat there and during, uh, um, I was talking about some of the time we get distracted. And it will bring me back to my good friend, Paul Stratton, who shared this booth with me for 22 seasons until he untimely passed away last year. And, and we get off on those tangents. And like I always yeah. like to say though, as long as Chris and the boys are doing their job, we can talk about anything. So, not a bad first quarter for you, Coach McKay there, Joe. I mean, defensively playing a lot better than I think that they've played the last couple weeks, albeit against a better squad, which is really the good test. Yeah, the first, the last two weeks, as we spoke about it, the Red Devils have only allowed 14 points in eight quarters, but against this talented Wilmington squad that's only, don't let the record deceive you, three and two, they're a lot better than that. It seems like they've really held their own so far in this ball game. What they really need to do is stop the run on early downs. It seems like on a couple of the big plays, the Red Devils have really allowed themselves yeah. to get out of their routine and allow those extra yardage to go. Their, their safeties and players in the secondary really need to make those tackles. And 11 minutes plays. have been put back up on the clock, and it's time for me to turn it over to our good friend, Joe Vicioni. Joe? And I'll be joining you for play-by-play -play action. Now here's the, here's the pass over to number 84 on the reception. Getting pass into the secondary and down, brought down by Andrew Woods across the 50-yard line. That was number 84, Jason McGard, on the reception down to the 49-yard line. Uh, you know, a big block on the play by Tyler Thomas, the offensive right tackle. He come out in the screen, or the guard, I'm not sure where he lined up. Looks to be the guard. But well set up, and the receiver did a good job at waiting for it to develop, and then all of a sudden he got his receiver, his uh, blockers there to help him out. Yeah, it was a great job there. Now here's Connor Benoit, excuse me, uh, Andrew Sullivan in the shotgun, has two, three receivers in the game. Hands it off to number 42, Marino, who gets tackled across the 46, 45 yard line, picking up the first down. I'm giving signals up here <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> Just a simple what they've been running. They, you know, all these teams run this run pass option stuff. The only thing I don't like about it, and I'd have to talk to a football coach one of these days to get a pretty good description of what it's really all about, is that giving the guy, the, the guy with the ball five, six yards deep in the backfield. 
You know, Dan, the only thing else that I wouldn't like about it is it's the one thing that the uh, Eagles beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl with. Well. Nonetheless, on the carry, there was Marino again who picks up two yards, bringing up about a second and eight. When we have a little time, I'm going to give you my dissertation on why the NFL and the, pa the Patriots have it figured out correctly with the NFL. Why they have it figured out? Yes. First of all, uh, you got me going. You tweaked me. First of all, Malcolm Butler was the worst statistic statistical cornerback in the NFL last year. What about Eric Rowe? Uh, he didn't <laughs> play as much to become that leader. Now dropping back, here is Sullivan who firing down the field and that pass is pulled in and intercepted by the Red Devils. Jake McCulley coming down with the pick, jumping up, looking to almost be like a receiver on that one. Darn he was. Doherty intercepted it. Oh, Jake Doherty, yeah. nonetheless, great play in the secondary for the Red Devils. I don't know if it was by design, by smart players, or what, but they ran an out, they ran a, an in pattern with the outside guy, and the outside, the inside guy ran that little goal around the corner, and Doherty must have seen it coming, they must have saw it on film, because he didn't move, and, and it became a jump ball, and even at five foot six, he was able to, to have better position to, to out jump the receiver, and the Devils get a turnover, which is good. You know, Dan, I saw them running those catch and go drills in practice and Doherty was making a couple catches and it's good to see those drills come to fruition already as Andrew Woods swoops in to make the tackle on the running back. And so here's the Patriots outlook. They load up on deep offensive line, uh, offensive and defensive linemen and they build an average defense because in the NFL defense doesn't count. Who are the dominant defenses and do they win Super Bowls? They don't. You win the game on offense now and in the trenches. So that's my thought on that there. Doherty slipping a great carry there. Jake Doherty into the secondary. One man to beat and he is gone. Electrifying, high stepping and bulldozing his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Jake Doherty, his second of the game and the Red Devils strike yet again. 79 yards. He's got 132 yards on two carries that we know of. Wow. So Jake Doherty with a fantastic couple carries and getting into the end zone. This Red Devil offense will not be silenced as they have been stout early in this ball game. And if you're head coach Dan McKay, you have to be thrilled with your players. Now, this drives me crazy. You know, I don't like, why do you have to burn a timeout now? Okay, you might need it when it comes to the end. I'm going to go see. I'll be right back. I'm going to go see my former teacher, John Driscoll, on the clock, see if he wants my help. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Have fun with that. It's good to see Dan back in the booth after he took a leave of absence for a few weeks. And it's great to have him back in here. If you're just tuning into this game, the Burlington Red Devils are leading 18-7. to seven over the Wilmington Wildcats in their third home game of the season. The Red Devils' first two home games, they are undefeated as they beat the Bedford Buccaneers and the Watertown Red Raiders. The Red Devils so far into this matchup, trying to make it undefeated at home as well and continue that streak, winning their last four of five games. Well, and Doherty keeps adding to his numbers. Uh, he's banging them out pretty darn good this year. Um, and again, there must be a reason for that run pass option stuff. Where you get a kid like Doherty, you give him that six yard cushion, he can read and he can see where he wants to go with it. And I'll tell you, Dan, it's great to see that. As it looks like we have a two point conversion going on here. Yeah, they, they heard that you Carry were. Carried to Doherty, diving in, and Jake Doherty is in for the two point conversion, as you were saying, Dan. <laughs> they heard my talk about Wheelock early in the game, and they're just going to continue feeding the beast Jake Doherty that he is. I, I think they're on the take for you. They're trying to get you your number back to oh. 34. Okay. Maybe, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Puts them right back on track. What did I tell you? They needed two. They needed a two-point conversion. They just got it. And the Red Devils having a strong start to this game. Their last game at home, the Red Devils won 20-0 over the Watertown Red Raiders. So far with a 13-point uh, cushion, they're trying to repeat the same fortune and walk away with the W. And what has been a major impact in this game has been Jake Doherty, but even more of that, Dan, has been this offensive line being able to get some early blocks 
and really pave this lane for Doherty to run wherever he wants. Well, the thing, the thing to, to remember, we talk about, and I've seen this in my travel so far early season, is that defense here has also become a little bit in question. There's the kick, and it's going to be fielded up the middle and taken back, cutting down inside, tackled, made at the 24-yard line by the Red Devils. So as I was saying, Sean Pinkham. as I was saying about defense, you know, with all the with all the um, emphasis on taking the head the the head-to-head the -head contact out of the game and the big hits out of the game, you see a lot of teams on playing teams, as good as Stoneham is, okay, and right now they're the, they're the class of the Middlesex League Freedom Division. Definitely. As good as they are and as strong as they are, they weren't they weren't, they weren't a great defensive team, and the Devils put up. A few points on them, a play here and there, they're back in that contest. So I think that it really, really is, is a state of the game, and, and it's really trickling down to the high school level. Here Sullivan gives it on the handoff over to Marino, who picks up about a yard on the carry before being tackled near the line of scrimmage by this highly touted Red Devil defensive line. Magata, Magata's on that stop, I think. You know, and I spoke to John Magata before this game, and. The Boston Herald, I believe, they predicted the Red Devils to lose this one. And Did Magata, my friend Danny V do that? I believe so. I'll have to have a word with him, I'll tell you. And uh, Magada, I asked him, what do you feel about that prediction? And he said, we're always disrespected every week, but it feels good to be the underdar un <laughs> underdog. Slipping my words. And well, the they were the underdog in Stone, and I don't think they were disrespected on that <laughs> night. <laughs> Here's the handoff over to Marino yet again, and he's going to be swarmed up by the Red Devils. Tackle led by Andrew Woods coming over to make his third tackle of the ball game. I had the opportunity to see this team in preseason, Wilmington, and you know, their the, the first couple series, they were better than they looked in, in, in the game that I saw them, and tonight they've kind of stepped a little step back here the last two series. Um, you know, you know, some of their blocks aren't being, you know, not holding their blocks, not catching the ball here and there, etc. So, <clears throat> and Wilmington will take a timeout now. So, you, you sit there and, and it may have a little something to do with what Burlington's doing. Um, as we move forward, I believe they host Melrose next week in the finale of the Freedom Division. And, and that's going to carry, that might be two weeks in a row they're playing, uh, the way the playoff system is set up. <coughs> it's about uh, wins and, and, and points and how your opponents do. And, and right now, Burlington and Melrose, they're both in that 3, 4, 5 range, depending what they do the last couple weeks. Melrose has, I believe they have Wakefield tonight, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Wakefield. And Burlington and Melrose in a two-way tie for second place. This game is going to be instrumental. And next week as well, as deciding that playoff spot, who's going to hold on to two. Everyone knows that Stoneham, they're going to, so pretty much number run one. away with this division. It all comes down to what the Red Devils can do in the next two outings and but secure a good playoff spot. The Devils could lose next week and still be the home team against Melrose the following week. Yeah. Okay. Um, because Mel but the problem is Melrose's non-league games were against Lincoln Sudbury and I believe maybe Reading. And both of those teams have got better records than Bedford and, and Woburn, let's say, and that's critical to determining their opponent's value to raise them up and down the, the scope. There was Sullivan firing over to Steven Smolinski before he got leveled by the Red Devils. Great tackle made there, and that's going to force a fourth down and turn. Ter oh, First me, what punt. now? What word is that? Can we have a little word wealth here? Turd? I was <laughs> going to say turnover on downs, but I meant to say punt. <laughs> I was reminiscing with one of my, my former color guys, Stephen McGuire, a uh, teacher down at Situate High School now, and I said, I did use the word wibbler once on the air, and he figured out that it was a combination of a wobbler and a wibble, or yeah. a wiggle. It was a wibbler. He goes, you said wibbler. I said, yes, and everybody heard. It was Thanksgiving Day, as a matter of fact, too. As this Red Devils special teams unit set on the field here, returners are Jake Doherty, and Ryan O'Hower and Dan, any doubt on who they're going to kick this one to? Yeah, they're going to kick it to <laughs> Coach McDonough. <laughs> okay, because I've seen him run. Uh, hey, don't his, be surprised. That man could days. run a fast 40. 
Now here's the punt, plenty of leg into the direction of Doherty out of bounds, sailing past the 50 yard line. Well, well let me add something. If you're gonna do that, you might as well go for it on fourth down. You gained 16 yards, I think it was, if I look at it there. So I, I understand the respect they have for Doherty and O'Halloran. I understand why they're trying to do that. But I just don't know if high school kickers spend enough time because of the depth of the rosters you know, they're practicing every day. Yeah. It's not like they're going over in the side field and punting the ball 50 times and learning how to put it in different spots. I'm just not sure they're putting that much time into it to be able to do what they're asking him to do. Yeah, I agree with you, Dan. And I mean, most kickers here, they're trying to make the roster at a different position at wide receiver or running yeah. back. So why spend the time kicking the field goals? Now here's the handoff up to Doherty, hugging that ball tight and picking up extra yardage into the secondary. Doherty still on his feet and down across the 25. Breaking tacklers, Jake Doherty. What a carry from him. If they change anything, they're crazy. I mean, do it again. Do it until they stop it. And, and they haven't been able to stop it. That deep handoff over the left side. Don't go right. You're strong left here. You're tight into the left side. Give it to him and go. And talk about that low center, center of gravity making a difference. Great block by Magata as Doherty climbs his way and dives it wasn't towards too the great 20 <laughs> it wasn't as a flag too great. is on the field because <laughs> here comes the flag it's going to yep. be a holding penalty and it's going to be on Magata right Curse the, the commentator attack. Dan that's too bad <laughs> <laughs> so that's well, he says he wrapped him up well you'll have to go back to YouTube this week and uh, go to the Vince Lombardi films back from the 1960s about blocking 101 Whatever it was, the referee didn't think that was good. <laughs> <laughs> so 10-yard penalty, going to make it a first and 20 after Johnson Magata gets hit with his first holding penalty of the ball game. The Red Devils back with Pena. Is Jake Doherty in front of him is the fullback, Jake McCauley. Now here's Doherty on the carry, runs into his own man, Andrew Woods, before being tackled at the 35-yard line. Ooh, 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 ooh. Why does anyone have the football, Kenyon? <laughs> hmm. Maybe trying to get away with a little sneak there. Test now, the referees. Yeah, now that they've stopped it, now let's see what Burlington's going to do. I think they're going to go back to the air right now. I'd find, I'd see if I can find O'Halloran on that same crossing pattern. Because there's no deep safety right now. Wilmington's all up. They're obviously concerned about Doherty. So now you've got two receivers on the right side. They appear to be both be in single coverage. Nine-man box. Now here's the handoff. Give it what back do to I Doherty know? once again. Picking up extra yardage, and Jake Doherty is gone across the 15-yard line. Doesn't matter if there's nine, if it's a nine-man box. Jake Doherty making this defensive front pay. Well, that was a good read by Doherty. He started out to the right. Things get kind of bunched up there, and he cut it back to the left where there was daylight. And, and, and again, the only thing bad about that, once you get through the first, you know, that first batch, there's nobody there to stop him. So Jake Doherty having his way in this game, trying to pave his way his way to another historic night, already with two touchdowns and over 150 yards rushing. Here's Doherty on the cutback as he jumps back inside and picks up about maybe one on the carry. Looks to be short of the picking up the first down. Nope, he is. And the Devils move the chains, negating that prior holding penalty against Burlington. If you're just tuning into this game, the Burlington Red Devils are leading 20 to seven over the Wilmington Wildcats. I'm Joe Vicioni alongside Dan Brothers. Thanks for tuning into this game of BCAT sports coverage of Red Devil football. Dropping back, Pena, give it to Doherty. Why not? As he's wrapped up from the legs by what looked to be number 42, Peter Marino. Nope, number 43, Bailey Smith making the tackle. One thing there. about these, these funky new uniforms all these teams wear, so sometimes it's a numbers. nightmare to read numbers. Now, the good part about this is you got the dark on the white. There are some uniform numbers out there that are just miserable to read. Um, Bishop Fenwick is one of them. They have that, that athletic gold on white. Uh, who else did I see earlier? Somebody. But here's Doherty again, pal. Here's Doherty on the outside, and Jake Doherty gets across, out of bounds across the six-yard line. On the great carry. 
Picking up extra yardage. Number 22 making the tackle, Joseph DeMonico, the junior linebacker, swooping out to make the tackle and stopping Doherty from picking up extra yardage. That's going to force a third and three for this Red Devil offense. Of they just have less than four minutes remaining in the first half. As Pena looks to get the call as we have a timeout on the field. Again, yeah. stopping the clock. Dan, you're pretty frustrated with that. Well, my, my problem with it is this. I think, it, you know, you look at the situation in the game. Okay, it's third down and three. There's 320 left in the first half. The clock was stopped, okay, because it went out of bounds. All right, and you know what? It may not make a difference tonight, but when you get into a playoff game, when you start burning timeouts, <clears throat> it's fourth and three, a third and three. The kid's got 160 yards rushing. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Throw a ball to the corner of the end zone right now? You're not going to. You're going to sit there and you're going to probably run the football. Call the play and run it. And then if you want to call a timeout on fourth down, that might be a little bit more, you, you know, a little bit more definitive as, as far as the time to call timeout. So, so sometimes it drives me crazy. Um, I, I just think that with the advent of the five timeouts, coaches have a lot more abuse, and I say abuse or misuse of timeouts because they have the five. And the problem becomes not tonight, but three weeks down the road if they've won a first round game and they're in that second round game is a battle and they might run out of them because they burned them too early. Oh, Dan, if you're complaining just now, let's wait till the fourth quarter <laughs> and see all those timeouts roll around if it's a I close one. I don't mind one. them using them. I just think just this early in the game. Yeah. yeah. And with the clock already stopped, now here's Kyle Pena has two receivers into the game. An extra fullback on the handoff to Doherty trying to go one way, then back inside on the carry. Dan Brothers called that one. He's got 160 plus yards already. Fourth down for Burlington. Now if he takes a timeout, I have no problem with it. It's a play that you want to sit there and make sure you get right. But they may have called two plays in the huddle. So fourth and two with less than three minutes remaining in the second quarter. Dan McKay trying to dial up a play call for his offense. Almost certainly going to be a run here by Doherty. And they go and left behind McCauley and the, and the bunch. Back to Doherty, powering it up the Ooh. middle, and he is stopped short. <clears throat> I don't short. think he made it. Forward progress will mark him a couple yards in front. I don't and think he, he didn't made get it. there. Yeah. <clears throat> So a key defensive stop from the Wildcats led by their interior defensive line as the Red Devils come up short for the second time. I have no problem quarter. whatsoever with the call. Okay, they've got a kid who, who is just tearing it up. Let him go, let him run, and see if he can get a, you know, a yard and a half. This time you couldn't. And I'll tell you, Dan, it's great to see the emergence of Jake Doherty, and we've seen it over the years. Out of all the great running backs that have come out of this Red Devil program, we saw Shanae Garrier, remember him, and then Zach Sear, and now Jake Doherty, another along the line of great tailbacks. Are you going to have to make me go way back <laughs> to bring some names up? Here's the carry over to Marino, and Marino picks up about a yard or two. And we call it PBYWBs. Players before you were born. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Dan. Nah, Enlighten kidding. me. What street were you on? Harris Drive. Uh, I think we'll keep that confidential for this broadcast. Well, the whole world knows now because I sat there and blurted it out. And with the advent of this thing called the internet, and I'm just trying to figure it out now. You can find anything out. Joe's a cancer. He uh, uh, that means he's born in the July, June, July time frame. Uh, he's looking at several schools. He's an intelligent young man and. Ladies, come get them. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> There's the handoff up the middle by Marino, and he's going to be wrapped up. Short of the first down, Nick Campbell swooping over to make the tackle, making his presence felt as the clock continues to melt down as the two-minute warning stops it. Now I know that this is not the team I saw two weeks ago in Stone, okay? Uh, it's not the team offensively playing against them, but defensively, they're doing a much better job in so many aspects of the game. Um, but this in particular, the defensive front is doing a terrific job right now at really, really frustrating Wilmington. Wilmington has been in second and third in mid to long range the whole time. 
And that's not a success, a recipe for success against anybody, let alone a Burlington team is trying to, to grow defensively. Here's the fake, firing over to his left. That pass is incomplete. Intended receiver was, I believe, number 81, Kyle Kenyon, as that's gonna bring up a fourth and six as the special teams unit comes on to the field for a punt, as the Red Devils will get another chance at getting on the scoreboard after coming up short on fourth down. Now, let me tell you, this is a, um, the difference right now in this game is the fact that Kyle Pena can throw the ball down the field with some accuracy. If you watch that last series of Wilmington on that third down, every pattern was short. And Burlington guys were right next to them, shoulder to shoulder, running the whole way. Here's the punt, low and again, one, and that's gonna fall we, out of bounds. Again, here we go Short again. of the 30. What did we just talk about? Again, it's just not, and I just said again four times. All right, so when the media critics grab this tape on Monday, they'll say, brothers just said it again four times on the same play. I did. And that's because of the whole kicking thing we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, trying to keep the ball away from the guys from Barrington who can run, who can avoid people, who've got you know big play capabilities. They just kicked the ball 11 yards. Yeah. All right? So I get it. I'm from the old school. Kick the ball as deep as you can. If the guy can run it back, when you get there, tap him on the shoulder pads and say, nice run, son. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, just kicking that ball out of bounds for no yardage there. Not too much sense. Well, if you're the Red Devils on the other side of it, if I'm Coach McKay, I'm thrilled that I have a return man. That can take it back if he needs to. If not, look at the fantastic field position they have starting from the 25-yard line. Here's Pena. Motions Doherty up out as a wide receiver to the left in the slot. Dropping back. Here's Pena trying to throw this one away. Flag on the field. That pass is intercepted. There's your big man. <laughs> Linville Joseph just intercepted it, Joe. And it looks like... Number 74 making the interception, Patrick McAndrew. Nonetheless, the Wildcats take over. There was a flag on the field. It was a holding call against the Red Devils. Nonetheless, Kyle Pena throws his first interception of the season. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Excuse me, sorry. No, I was going to say, didn't he throw it against Stoneham? Third interception of the okay, season. I was going to say. First interception in the last one. three games. Y you know what? That's a good job by Wilmington. They brought a little extra pressure that time. Uh, you had the hold, and then you had the, the interception. That was almost Linvel Joseph, part <laughs> two. The guy caught it right in his belly. He was like, ooh. -hoo -hoo. Unfortunately, he couldn't get away from the Devils lineman, or else he may have had, he had a little room. I'm sure one of the big, fast guys from Burlington would have caught him, though. Here's Sullivan dropping back. Looking down the field, firing deep, and that pass is batted incomplete by number 20 on the Red Devils. Great coverage by John Hurley in the secondary. That was a nice job by the intended receiver, uh, Connor Benoit. Uh, when he saw the way the ball was thrown, he became a defensive back and actually broke it up. It looked as though that Hurley was the intended receiver, the way it was thrown with the position they had. And that's what I talked about there, about the ability of Pena to throw the ball downfield versus Sullivan. Sullivan a little bit inaccurate on in that play there. Earlier one he threw deep, was intercepted by Doherty. So that gives Burlington a little more opportunity now to, 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 to bunch the box and keep it out of the run. Three changes of possessions in the last two minutes as that pass falls incomplete, it looks like. Dropping that one in the open field, looking reminding me of Cordell Patterson. <laughs> you know what's funny about Cord Cord Cordell? Cordell Patterson. Humor me. Cordell was Cordell Stewart. You know what's funny about him? What? They've thrown two screens to him this year where he's gone either sideways or backwards. Yeah. And both times he fell down. <laughs> it's funny watching that guy because he makes all the plays in the open field Fast. so spectacularly. But when you give it to him in space, right to the left, these little screens, he can never go anywhere. Nonetheless, here's Sullivan firing downfield to his receiver, who, unlike Patterson, makes the reception. <laughs> Number 24, Stephen Anthony, picking up the first down and moving the chains for the Wildcats offense, which has been devoid of first downs in the past few drives. That's a good patent there by uh, number 24. Uh, Anthony uh, ran his guy off, came back nice to the ball. Sullivan threw it well. That just shows a little bit 
A little bit of a diversity out of their offense a little bit. We haven't seen that pattern yet. We've seen the quick ones out to the side, the little slants across the middle. So good job by them. And a timeout. There we go. More timeouts taken. Oh, golly gee. Oh, boy, Dan, you are just thrilled tonight. But Quite you know, a game for you. <laughs> I don't mind these timeouts because they work within the confines of the play. Yeah. You know, obviously it's a, a good chance for the defense. To... There's a minute and ten left here in the quarter. You don't want to give up points going in uh, because I believe Wilmington kicked off. So Wilmington's going to try the old two-for-one switcheroo like the, uh, like, the team, like, the, like the Patriots do all the time. Score at the end, get the ball back, score again. And so Yeah, Dan, and maybe on, if they do score, maybe on the kickoff they'll finally listen to you, stop <laughs> squibbing it, and just do an onside kick, right? Now you're talking my language. <laughs> again, I, again, if you're going to kick it 20, why not kick it 10? Yeah. And kick it, you know, hey, Magata, Hakuna Magata, here it comes, you know. Kick the ball and see if the big guy can hold on to it. I mean, <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see. Oh, that would be fantastic. Maybe pick that with Rand? <laughs> <laughs> Give us one of those big man returns, please. <clears throat> Stack trips formation to the right, one receiver to the left. Dropping back is Sullivan with no extra protection. Firing deep downfield over the head of his intended receiver as Jake Doherty was on coverage, intended for number 24, <coughs> Stephen Anthony. Yeah, that's the old, you know, bunch him up one way, throw it the other. Unfortunately, there's not a Josh Gordon on that side of the field. <laughs> you mentioned Corderell Patterson, Josh Gordon, by all reports, has had a pretty good 10 days of practice after the last Thursday night game. A little extra time with him and, and TB12. And yeah. You know what? It's going to be a very interesting Sunday night, isn't it? Yeah, if they could get things going for him. What, six foot four, 230? That frame? Oh. Do you, do you see the pictures of his body? Oh, my goodness. Let's not get gushing over that as that pass sails incomplete and tended for number two. Number he is a nine, Connor athlete. Benoit. Good coverage there by the Red Devils and going back to Gordon, yeah. Yeah, just a, a stud player. athlete. I mean. If he could get all the off the field issues together. Listen, he's in a state now where it's legalized. He likes huh. to get, have a little fun with his yeah. friends, okay? <laughs> he likes to uh, excite himself, yeah. But you know what? Uh, we we'll, won't we'll, we'll turn this into a debate. We'll leave that one alone for now. We're not Stephen A. Smith. We're not gonna go and <laughs> talking about <laughs> weed. As that pass firing down the field and intercepted by Jake Dory. Seemed like it was going to him the whole time. On the run back, getting a key block. Flag is thrown nonetheless. And Doherty down across the 45 yard line. What an interception as it seemed like Sullivan was just tossing it to Doherty. Well, that's a timing route. And the problem is when you're picking on the fastest guy in the Burlington team, the timing can get thrown off a little bit because that route, that route makes you have to run and create separation. So, golden opportunity here for the Devils here in the, with 47 seconds left. Now, here comes my session. They only have two timeouts left. That wasted timeout that I was kind of throwing my hands up about there you go. could come back to haunt them now because they've got 47 seconds to go 80 yards. Now, the one thing we've learned in the early part of the season, especially here tonight, it doesn't always take 47 seconds yeah. in 10 plays to go that distance. They can do it certainly in one. And jogging onto the field, as yeah, as you spoke about it, we saw early in this game, Jake Doherty have a couple electrifying runs that really just went the distance that started back here <laughs> around the 20 or 30 violation. yard line. Oh, they didn't Four have a receivers set. Here's Pena dropping back, rolling to his left, firing to Rhino Howard who slips a tackle. <laughs> and dropped down near the 25-yard line. In flag football, that would have been a tackle. <laughs> Grabbing the towel of O'Hauer and by the back as Pena showing off his arm a little bit as the clock continues to tick below a minute. Seems like the Red Devils are not stressing it too much to try to get into the end zone again. As I can see, Dan, you disagree a bit with that. Well, you have the timeouts, and you're not, I don't think you're getting the ball to start the second half, right? First play from scrimmage, Darty 52 yards for a touchdown, so you're going to let it run out? I'm, I'm not sure I agree with this. I'm as, not sure I agree with it, but as, the results are pretty good so far. And as the clock strikes zero, the Red Devils lead 20-7 to here at Varsity Field. 
in what has been a fantastic first half offensively and defensively for the Red Devils, despite a couple questionable play calls at the end. We, we knew, well, not questionable. They didn't <laughs> run a play at the end. That might have been the thing. But, you know, we, we knew coming in that they were a team that had a lot of, of weapons on offense. But what we've seen tonight, we've seen a pretty good defensive effort against a pretty good team. This is not a, a scrub team they're playing here. Um, they might be a little bit limited in, the, in their approach, but they're a pretty good football team. And, and right, right now, it's been a good 22 minutes for Burlington. Let's see what happens over the next 22. And Dan, that defensive effort, it has all happened from the line of scrimmage. That defensive line has been imposing their will. And as we spoke about it, the game is won in the trenches. They had, they had a, low st a slow start, I thought. I thought that Wilmington was having some success in the first couple of series. But all of a sudden, they have just 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 broke them down and, and they've got nothing. So guess what time it is? What time, Dan? It's band time. And that's halftime. As you've been tuning in to Red Devil Football as the score is 20 to 7. Thanks for tuning in so far. I'm Joe Vicioni alongside Dan Brothers, and we'll see you at the start of the second half. Bravo. Please welcome the Bronson High School marching Red Devil.
Welcome back to Varsity Field on the campus of Burlington High School. BCAT in Burlington High School presents Red Devil Football Halftime. 20 to 7, Burlington on top. And Joe Fischio and Dan Brothers. A good first half by Burlington. Probably the most complete first half they probably had all year as far as offense and defense. Yeah, offensively, defensively, the Red Devils have done it on both sides of the football. It's definitely great to see the Red Devils do that. And we spoke about it before. The past two games, the Red Devils have been stout on both fronts, but this has really been the first test that they've faced since their loss against the Stoneham Spartans, and it's good to see them respond as they currently have a 20-7 lead with Wheelock set to kick this one off. Yeah, so Burlington a very good first half. Wheelock's kick up and, and over end comes down to Marino at the 15. He's out to the 20 with a little bit of room. Burlington closes it down. Number 81 for the Devils on special teams is uh, Joshua McLeod. So Joshua McLeod making the tackle there. Nonetheless, it was a good pickup by Wilmington on the return, and that's been one of the weaknesses for the Red Devils, special teams unit when it comes to covering those kicks. So it's first down and 10 for the Wilmington Wildcats, and if they want to get back in this game, they've got to score relatively early in this half, preferably now. Because if you give Burlington the ball back and a chance to, to go down and score, then uh, you certainly um, will be a recipe for disaster. Marino on the handoff, coming to the left. A little room as he bangs his way out over the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Jake McCauley wearing number seven down the bottom of the pile. Had a chance to see Jake's dad. Here he's right down in front of us today. Real happy with his kid's uh, output so far this season. Yeah, Jake McCauley last season, a MIAA All-Star, and this year making his presence felt. Not too many tackles for him so far in this game. Is playing a more hybrid safety role, nonetheless still making his presence felt. Here's Marino now to the right. Gets outside, keeps his feet moving, does a nice job getting into Burlington territory. He's driven out of bounds and the flag goes flying as number 44, Sean McGilvery on the stop. He may have been a little bit too far out of bounds on that hit. That's what it looks like. Yep, personal foul. Going to be marched off probably against the Devils. Yeah, you got to watch out for those penalties. Those personal fouls are definitely ones you can easily avoid. We saw a couple of them two weeks ago against the Red Raiders. Just some stupid penalties that you really want to try to stop. And they're going to give up an extra 15 yards on that one. And going back to it, talking about this Wilmington offense, what they need to do to get going, is it's going to be very tough for them to contend with the Red Devils as they're going to be down by two scores already. And Marino now with some room, but Chris Jones wraps him up as he gains about three on the play. Make it two on the play. So Chris Jones swooping in to make the tackle there. It was a great play from the line of scrimmage. As just one gapping over past the line of scrimmage and making the tackle as Marino went for about three yards on the carry. And that's going to be a very important part of this ball game if the Red Devils defensive line can continue to win up front. If they can, it will really allow their back seven to play with a lot more firepower and speed. So it's second down. We'll call it seven. He got a three-yard pickup. We have some movement by Kenyon on the right side of the line. It's going to be a... A false start. Yeah, Kenyon launched his right leg early on that one. Easy five-yard penalty for, for the referees to see. And if I'm Burlington, I'll take that one. Easy penalty. And this Wilmington team, pretty one-dimensional so far. In the first half is when they did decide to pass the rock, it didn't go too well as the arm of Sullivan has not been on fire lately. Second down and 12, the ball rests at the 36 yard line. In motion now comes Benoit from right to left. Here's the inside play action face. Sullivan now throws the ball to the outside. It's complete, no, it's incomplete. Tended receiver was number 84, Jason Marquardt. Yeah, Dan, it looked like Sullivan was about three yards to the right off of his intended receiver. And he really didn't give his receiver much of a chance to make the catch on that ball. Even if he caught it, it would have been a back shoulder reception for only about a four yard gain. 
but would have certainly knocked down the uh, YTG, the yards to go. So it's third down and 12. Sullivan returns to the huddle with the play as Wilmington is trying to sit there and cut into a 20 to seven deficit. Wilmington actually led, no, they didn't. Burlington led on the first touchdown by Doherty. First play from scrimmage, 53 yards for the score. Here's a swing pass to Marino. Wow. <laughs> a big hit by O'Halloran, who wasn't fooled by that play at all. And Ryan O'Halloran is pumped up after that hit, and why not? Coming out of the secondary and making that tackle across the 40-yard line, really providing a nice oomph to the game and firing up his teammates. And it looks like fourth down territory here, Dan. Yeah, they're going to they're be going for it. I mean, they're... We're gonna have the, the kicker punt the ball 12 yards out of bounds. <laughs> I mean, I, I can understand why they're doing it. You know, I think the coaches are really starting to listen to you at this point. Maybe they got an extra <laughs> headset. I'd love to get on the headset with, with, with the boys. In my retirement days, I wanna be an old gruff guy on the headset. Well, that was about the same result as the punt. Fourth down and Burlington holds the pass intended. It looked to be Kenyon on the right side, and it was incomplete. And Burlington does a good job after a couple of uh, good plays in the long penalty to hold and take over on downs. Yeah, the Red Devils defense doing an excellent job there, getting lucky with a couple of communication errors at the end as they force a turnover on downs. And it will be interesting to see what this offense drums up on this drive. The Red Devils have been so confident in Kyle Pena. But, Dan, as, we, as you talked about earlier in the game, will they try to do some tricks to throw this Wakefield defense off guards and maybe get into the end zone again. Wilmington has got uh, 10 guys up front within five yards of the line of scrimmage as Doherty comes to the right. Grab there by Kenyon to slow him down. It's actually going to be a negative play back to the 35-yard line. One of the few negative plays that Burlington's had thus far tonight. Yeah, one of the first tackle for losses, despite a 10-man box, McKay was pretty confident with Doherty in his effort as he was having his way in the first half. Not the same sort of effort on this one as Doherty went almost nowhere. Now will be interesting to see what we have from Kyle Pena and if he can try to take some shots downfield and use that arm that we know he has been very accurate with in this season. Second down and 13 on the three-yard loss. Pena now, play action fake, back to pass. Over the middle, McCauley's wide open, and he just missed him. Just threw it a little bit beyond his fingertips and it falls incomplete. Nobody was near Jake McCauley at the 40-yard line. And Dan, I don't think Pena expected to see McCauley that wide open, throwing it just over his hands. It would have been a fantastic reception. The run after catch yards would have gotten him down to at least the 20-yard line. It's a big opportunity miss for the Red Devils, and Pena is going to be walking back to the huddle wishing that he completed that pass. The one thing I like about Pena is he doesn't look like he's too frazzled. By yeah. You know, he just kind of sat there and said, okay, we missed that one. He gets to play, and here we go again. We'll have to say, Dan, the first game he ever played in as a freshman was against Bill Ricca. Oh, huh. I remember that night. It was only Pena. pass. Now, Pena's been high on a couple of balls here tonight. Right then and there, the second one sails over O'Halloran's head, and it falls incomplete. So Burlington will be in what will appear to be a punting formation. And it's going to be interesting here if I'm Pena. What's going through my mindset at this point? You've had a couple incompletions. Hopefully it doesn't rattle him as a former league all-star. Hopefully he can get things under control. Now it will be interesting to see Wheelock's punt. <laughs> a lot different than the woman's punt. Yeah. Fair catch signal for and caught by Benoit at the 31-yard line. Wheelock with plenty of leg on that one. And Dan, I spoke to Cam Wheelock over the off season and he was asking me, Joe, do you know any kicking, uh, any exercises to get my kicking distance and punt punting distance further? And I said, Cam, I don't know why you're asking me. I'm just a commentator, but it seems like he's found those exercises and really been able to <laughs> jolt the ball down you, the field. You said, yeah, come for a run with me. <laughs> I want to sit there and we want nice long strides. Yeah. So Wilmington goes back on offense, first down and 10. This game's kind of quieted down a little bit. Now very, very, uh, not a high scoring, only one touchdown at the 832, at 832, at the 832 mark of the second period. And since then, there's been no scoring. Here's Marino right side. He running hard, O'Halloran makes the stop. 
at about the 39-yard line. It gave him about six, make it second down and four. No, on that play, Marino had a couple extra blockers inside. It was interesting to see him take the option and go outside and pick up about six yards. I think if he stayed on the left shoulder of his pulling guard, he would have picked up a first down or more. So he'll probably be regretting that one. Second down, we're going to call it three. Wilmington's had problems scoring after the long touchdown by Kenyon. Here's the pitch. That's not going to get it done. As Marino sat there and recovered the fumble as him and Sullivan didn't appear to be on the same page. Yeah, it looks like he slapped it over to him, threw it as fast as he could, and just not expecting it. The ball pops loose, and the Red Devils almost got away with their, what is it, Dan? Third turnover, second turnover of the game. So it's third down and three. Quickly, if uh, a whistle blows, a timeout being called by Wilmington. So 5.46 remaining in the quarter as, the, as Wilmington takes the timeout there, trying to get their offense back on cue. Have yet to score since the first half, in which they went on a long play for a touchdown. <laughs> a cold welcome to Tim Alberts, <laughs> the athletic director at Wilmington High School. Cold only because it is... Uh, Oh, let's see. Let's see if we can get a, a halftime temperature here. Dan, Just you have connections degrees. everywhere. I have connections everywhere. Here's the handoff to Marino again. Has some room in the first down, and he gets spun out to the 45-yard line, and a nice play on the third down and five by the Wildcats. And I know I'm a Burlington broadcaster, but it's nice to see some life from the Wildcats there as Marino just sprung loose across the 45-yard line, picked up a good block, and just got the first down. It's good to see him get going as we could maybe have a ball game and maybe get my uh, score prediction on cue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about now, you know. Get the Burlington team to win and bragging rights for the uh, announcers to be right on their score numbers. Go ahead, you guys vote. First down and 10, Marino goes to the middle and runs into number 77. Woodsy. Great tackle by Andrew Woods up the middle as this Red Devils defensive line has continued to put on a show when stuffing the run on the interior as Andrew Woods and Chris Jones combined to make the tackle. And that was really a big issue, Dan, for the Red Devils last year. And it's nice to see that their defensive line, at least on first and second down, has been producing. So it's second down and nine. Wide to the left side comes Kenyon. Wide right goes number 24, Anthony. In motion now, fake inside handoff over the middle, it's intercepted! By John Hurley. What a great interception by Hurley. Read the route perfectly by the wide receiver there, just jumps in front of it. <laughs> Looked like he was the intended receiver on that one as Hurley forces the second interception of the ball game. And the Hurley fan club all of a sudden woke up. <laughs> 31 tickets sold by the Hurley family, and he comes with an interception. Probably the first of his career. What's up to the stands, huh? Little point to mom and dad, or grandpa, or a big fan up there, and uh, just well done, like you said. You know, dropped nicely into the into his area there, and, and picked it off, and it's now first and 10 for the Devils. O'Halloran now goes motion from right to left. Here's the handoff to Doherty. Number 81, Kenyon, is the uh, guy in the backfield. He's done that a couple of times here in the second half. And another loss in the play for Doherty. And while it's, that stuff was made on Jake Doherty there, going back to John Hurley, it's great to see him make some plays here because I remember about a year and a half ago in the offseason training, Hurley said, I'm just not having a good time with this football right now. I think I'm going to take a break. And he got himself right and then got back into the system, got back in the offseason workouts. Got onto the field as a great slot corner and already making plays. Pena now rolls to the right, looking for McCauley. He has him, and he's knocked out of bounds by, by Christian Robarge, a defensive back for the Wildcats. He gets out to about the 38 yard, uh, correction, 37 yard line, third down and 12. Good reception by McCauley, what looks to be his second of the game as the Red Devils trying to 
make the third down conversion a little bit shorter than a third and 14. It's going to be a third and 12. It will be interesting to see what Pena and McKay uh, dial up here. Third down That's and 12 for the Devils. Pena right past, looking, looking, fires, and it's incomplete off the hands of Doherty as he was running a little patting out of the backfield. And fourth down, it looks like, no. Well, Looks like Coach is throwing the offense back out there. Yeah, that was some good interior pressure there by Wilmington as they forced Pena to get it, to get the ball out very quick. Fourth down appears they're going for it. Here's Wouldn't be snap. surprised to punt. Oh, the old pooch yep. punt. I love it. Pena's kick, not exactly oh, a there work you of go. art, but very, very effective. And it will come down to the, oh, the 36-yard line where Wilmington will go back on offense first and I love gimmicks like that. Yeah. You know, I really do. You know, Dan, I'm not surprised about that because we saw three of those pooch puns against Watertown two weeks ago. There you go. And it proving to work out pretty well here as the ball is going to be placed across the 35-yard line for the Wildcats to work with. Another guy you wouldn't know right here. Bob Euchre throws out the first pitch tonight. U-E-C-K-E-R. You may want to go back and see some of his... Uh, his advertisements from the late 80s, they were hysterical. Hmm. Not much of a baseball guy myself, let's, man. Let's, let's I'm sorry to way. say that. He was a worse baseball player than Lou <laughs> Maloney. He has the handoff to Marino on the right side. Humor me. Who was uh, Lou Maloney? Lou Maloney? Yeah. He's a sports radio analyst. He was he was Nomad Garcia Parra's best friend. May have been the best gift he had as a Red Please Sox. Please don't tell me he, he was, was bad as Buckner. He didn't oh, pull a oh much worse than Buckner. Okay. Buckner was actually very good. Except for the, you know, yeah, costly you know play. They were going to lose that game anyway, so we could sit there and argue about that one. But Buckner was very good. I got to give you, I got to tell you. I'll tell you, Dan, I'm not much of a baseball fan unless someone prevents me with, presents me with free Red Sox tickets. <laughs> well, they just gave a ticket to Marino to run left, and it didn't do too well. Number 46 for the Devils, Nick Campbell, the guy who who's played pretty well for them from the reports I've read and the, and the games I've seen. And did a nice job on that tackle there. Yeah, Campbell's done a great job this season stepping in for the senior that departed last year, Cody Davidson, as he's really taken over the linebacker role and made some great tackles in this ball game so far, one of which making his presence felt a lot around the line of scrimmage, excuse me. And with Wilmington coming to the line of scrimmage, they're going to need to get their offense rolling as they have yet to score since the second quarter. First quarter, rather. Back to pass to Sullivan. Looking right, throws. It's complete to Benoit or Benoit. And he gets out to the 48-yard line where he'll have a first down. And Dan, as this offense continues to get going, it's weird to see the score 20 to 7 as it is because going back to the first quarter, me and you, after the Red Devils and the Wildcats traded punches and scores, we both thought this was going to be a game for the age, ages when it comes to high scoring. Yeah, I thought we were going to have 65, 65, 70 points. Then again, what do we know? That's why we're up here. <laughs> Here's Marino nicely into the hole. Correction, not Marino, with Bailey Smith. And Bailey Smith is gone, shoved out of bounds by Ryan Culhane. At the 17-yard line, all of a sudden, Wilmington, they've hung around here in the second half. You know, you, you feel like Burlington should be up by about four touchdowns. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Wilmington's trying to make it a one-score game. And Bailey Smith just back into it, giving a better look for the Wildcats. We've seen so much of Marino and Smith just taking it across the right sideline. Why not give it a different change of pace type of back and pick up some extra yardage for the Wildcats as they have some new life into this drive. Here's Marino trying a correction, Bailey Smith again. At that time there, Bailey Smith was kind of dancing a little bit, couldn't find the hole, and the result was it didn't, didn't go too well for him at the end. So Woods coming up to make the tackle as the Red Devils have been pretty stout on first and second down. John Magata jogs off the field as the Red Devils go for a more quick and pass rushing look on the defensive line. Back to pass, Sullivan looking, looking over the middle. It's complete. And as he caught the ball, 
Number 44 for the Devils. Sean McGilvery. McGilvery grabbed him by the shirt and Benoit went nowhere. It'll be third down. The ball rests at the 17 yard line. They must get to the eight and a half for a first down. So third and about nine. And I gotta say, Dan, regardless of picking up really no yards on that play, that was a great reception by Benoit. Seems like he juggled that one at first, but just had the concentration to hold on to it. Nonetheless, the Wildcats face a pivotal third and nine here with just under a minute remaining in the third quarter. Sullivan now out of the gun. Has it inside handoff. Marino. Correction Smith. Flag comes in as the ball comes loose. In the area where holdings normally call. Looks to be a holding against Wilmington High School. And Wilmington, let's wait for the call by the referees, but it's almost certainly going to be a 10 yards there. All right, we're going to test your sports knowledge right now. All right. With baseball. Oh. What oh, round is baseball in right now? What round? Yeah, the yeah. ALCS, right? Well, second round, yeah. Yeah, second round. On this day in 1967, a Red, Sox, a Red Sox and Cardinals were in the World Series, and Bob Gibson hit a home run in Game 7. Okay? Yep. So on October 12th, 1967, Game 7 was played, whereas Game 7 this year wouldn't be played till about November 1st. Tidbits of useless information that you will never, ever <laughs> use in your life. You know, Dan, go ahead and ask me any trivia question when it comes to football. Really? Almost any question, Ooh. I can answer that one for you. Just 70s and later, maybe, 80s and later around there. You know the guy who ran the wrong way for a touchdown? Jim Marshall. I remember watching that. Jim Marshall, it's a great <laughs> one. Here's Sullivan now in the right. It's incomplete. As McCauley put the licking on Kenyon and the Red Devils. We've reached the end of the third quarter of play. It'll be fourth down and 16. And you know what? That 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 quarter was very interesting. It, it appeared that they just wanted to get it over with. Yeah. And now let's play fourth quarter football. So, uh, you know, not a, not a great quarter for the Devils, but you know what? The lead stays the same, which I think is the most important thing. Yeah, we reached the end of the third quarter. Burlington, as it was at halftime, leading Wilmington by a score of 20 to seven. Now the funny part about that Jim Marshall touchdown, yeah. when he got in the end zone, he just threw the ball up and it went out of the air. You know, a <laughs> touchdown, he threw it up in the air and ran off to the sideline. Whereas, if you think about it, um, it would have been more entertaining if he all of a sudden realized he was in the end zone. Oops, turn and run out, but how do we get on that? Oh yeah, you and your trivia question. I got a trivia question for you, Dan. All right, go ahead. All right, it's a current NFL question. Ooh. Who is the leading tackler this year in the NFL. Uh, you know what? I heard this last week. Um, you know what? I'll give you a little bit of a pass. Ready? As of last week, if you don't get this, I've given up. Oh, I give up. Um, I play fantasy football where we have to have defensive players. I know that Khalil Mack is just running rough shot. Yeah. Uh, it is Darius Leonard of the Indianapolis Colts. He was inactive versus the Patriots, but he has had a oh, fantastic yeah, yeah. start yeah, of the season. Yeah. 56 tackles in his four games. I believe it was four sacks, six passes defended, and five tackles for a loss or something. And speaking so. of a tackle, a pass defended or a tackle for a loss, Wilmington in a fourth and 16 here, and we're turning it right over to you. As I'll be taking over on. That was pretty cool. That was pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Dan. As Wilmington's offense will try to get going here on a fourth and 17 in Burlington territory. Here's Sullivan dropping back. Plenty of time. Fires to his left into double coverage, and that pass is dropped in, intercepted by McCauley, who takes it on the return and shoved out of bounds across the 34 yard line. Well, that was a jump ball. And that was very similar to the play that Doherty had the interception on back in the second quarter. All right, and McCauley had, he, he was intended for Benoit. McCauley, who's uh, listed as six foot, 190 pounds, certainly used every inch of those six feet to, hmm. to sit there and come up with his, uh, an intercept, his first interception of the night. However, for Wilmington, that interception almost served as a punt. With, with so. a bad return. Yeah. <laughs> 
I believe they're punters saying, oh, thank God, would have been around the same field position. Yeah, you and me. Something fell. Oh, yeah, your chapstick or glue, glue stick? Glue stick? Huh. I don't know, look underneath. Is that what it was? I don't know. We'll check it out later. Back on to the football. As a young man, what's, your, what's the big three of life for a young man or young woman? Keys, wallet, and cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my keys? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> As. Right around my neck on a lanyard. Can't lose them that way. There you go, Dan. That's one way to always keep track of it. Now here's Kyle Pena on a second and on a second and ten, drop thing back as two receivers in the game. An extra fullback as well as Jake McCauley after making the interception. Makes it on the play action, looking downfield. Oh, that yes, pass yes, to yes, a yes, wide yes. open Jake McCauley, and he is gone. What a touchdown reception from Jake McCauley, wide open for the touchdown as the Red Devils Strike yet again. 67 yards. You know, it was similar to a play they ran earlier where the guy goes across the middle from the outside and they run the little wheel around the end. And, and Wilmington didn't cover it well the first time. They didn't cover it well that time either. As McCauley makes the reception and hauls in his first touchdown of the game, his second of the season, as he has had quite a day. Second and two weeks. Second and two weeks. And you know, if you notice on that one there, compared to the one that he missed McCauley on just earlier in the third quarter, he had a little more touch on that one there, rather than throwing the, <laughs> you know, throwing the fastball a little bit over the middle. Are we calling a timeout an extra point? You know, Dan, when I see Pena back in there going for the two-point conversion, <laughs> I'm just hoping this timeout is going to be changed to an extra point. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Nonetheless, Pena is going to stay back onto the field to try to go for the two-point conversion, which would make it a three-score ball game. And Pena, who has had a fantastic game so far, struggled a little bit on the earlier drives in the third quarter. Nonetheless, redeemed himself on that last Touchdown completion to Jake McCauley, who did it all with his legs and run after the catch. Four receiver set. Here's the handoff to Doherty. No Not surprise. Doherty, 44. 44, Sean McGilvery. Yep. The fullback gets into the end zone. I haven't seen his face on offense since last season. As he punches the ticket and the two point conversion is good as the Red Devils lead 28 to seven here at Varsity Field with a commanding lead over the Wilmington Wildcats. Yeah, that was, that, that's, that's just a good job. Um, you know, you had a couple of series, you actually had a few series in a row where they hadn't really done a whole lot offensively. The good thing they didn't do was turn the ball over. The good thing they didn't do was sit there and put the ball on the ground. Um, so to sit there and come back and have, albeit a quick drive like that, where they find a real, you know, a wide open receiver and they, and they put in the end zone is a good job for that offense. You know, Dan, it's going to be really interesting to see what Wilmington does here because it seems like in, throughout the first five weeks of the season, they've really depended a lot on their defense. They've never had to really be in this big of a hole unless you'd count the 14 to 17 loss to Melrose as the kick is high end over end by Wheelock to about the 10, set to return this one. Bouncing out of bounds on the return was... Benoit. Benoit. Is it Benoit? No, yes. Benoit Benoit. Benoit Benoit. <laughs> However you want to pronounce it <laughs> on the return. And oh. you know, the, 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 right now that's one of the differences in the game is that Growing is kicking the ball off and, and Wheelock is kicking the ball as far and as hard as he can to get the ball down, you know, inside the 10 yard line. Yep. You would like to. And, you know, Wilmington's sitting there and they're trying to keep the ball away from the big guys, but I think it's had a little bit of an effect on them. As the Red Devils, their defense only allowing seven points. So far this in the past few games, they've only allowed 
21 points in the last 11 quarters. That pass Ooh. is fired incomplete, Ooh. nearly into the hands of Jake McCauley, who almost came up with his second interception. And that one could have been a pick six because there's nobody over here. You know, the receiver had passed him a little bit. The pass was behind the receiver. And had he picked that one off, he might still be running. So a near catch on a turnover for the Red Devils. Nonetheless, the Wildcats get pretty lucky there and start off with a second and 10. Here's Sullivan back into the shotgun. Has what looks to be Marino to his right. Three receiver set. Here's the handoff to Marino. Up the left on the draw, and he picks up about one or two yards on the carry before being stopped short by the Red Devils. Sean McGilvery swooping in to make the tackle near the line of scrimmage. You can hear it. Sounds muffled. And Dan having a conversation with your brother there. Yeah, giving him a little advice. <laughs> Doesn't sound too good over the loudspeaker. That's always a problem when your voice is, uh, or your goal is for your voice to be heard. Of course, we'll be watching this back on BCAT, and if it's not heard well, we'll be calling Chris in the middle of the night. <laughs> Trips formation to the right, dropping back here. Sullivan firing over to his receiver, 81, who stays on his feet after the low hit. That was completed to number 81, Kyle Kenyon, who picks up a couple yards. He's going to be short of the first down. Good run after the catch there. Nonetheless, that's going to bring up a fourth and eight for the Wildcats. I think that Chris might have bigger problems, though. Rumor has it that within the last couple of days, uh, his dad was seen in the water up at Salisbury Beach, and the temperature was about 51 degrees, and he thought nothing of it. So he might be still wrapping Donnie in blankets. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that's not too bad. 51 degrees over at the beach. I'm doing the polar plunge this that's, year. No. <laughs> that's in January. Listen, the, the problem isn't the water. It's the temperature of the water. Here's Bailey Smith. Look at that. And Bailey Smith with a, Marino rather, with a great carry. Nearly getting away with a, <laughs> yeah, Bailey Smith nearly getting away was Tommy Splagunis with an offsides. Nonetheless, Smith picks up the first down across the 50-yard line. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Wilmington's he's done some decent things on the ground. They just haven't been able to sit there and, and, and do enough in the air to keep the Devils' defensive backs honest. Here's the handoff over to Marino, who cuts back inside before being tackled near the 47-yard line. As the Red Devils player slow to get up is Andrew Woods coming over to make the tackle, his, his fifth tackle of the ball game. Very impressive for an interior defensive lineman to have that kind of statistics. So I, I've got to ask you something as a young young man. I always ask like young people for advice. You know, my wife bought me this nice little Patriots yep. you know, little thing, really nice. Yeah, I like it. But it has these holes in the side of the, of the sleeves. Which, Dropping back. Which I always see. Oh! And that pass is nearly intercepted oh. and hauled in. What a great reception in double coverage. <laughs> Both Doherty and uh, uh, John Hurley. It's yeah, John Hurley to go over there. The two of them, I think, had their eyes on pick six because they both broke with the ball at the same time, and they may have bumped each other out of the way. It was Colhane. What was that? Yeah, Cole Cole Hayden. Hayden. yeah. So it was Colhane and Doherty, maybe, but uh, Colhane and – but they, they, they clearly, I think, may have bumped each other off the play. And prevented a pick six and gave Wilmington another first down. And dropping back is Sullivan after picking up the first down. Oh, it's the pressure and that pass is intercepted by the big man. Up the middle. Dan, we finally got it. Chris Jones. Chris Jones with the interception. Not much of a run back. Nonetheless, running to the sidelines in disbelief. Hugging McDonough. And his offensive coordinator as the Red Devils <laughs> force a crazy turnover. We've, we've had two interceptions tonight <laughs> by, by <men>. interior linemen. <laughs> I think that will just say enough. Oh my goodness. Highlight of the ball game. I don't care if my prediction comes to fruition at this point. Jones with an interception. You know, I'll tell you something, Dan. I would love to see 
if the Red Devils could get down to around the red zone, put Jones in there, line well, up their version of the fridge listen, and just toss it to him. Jones was so excited, he forgot that he was going in on offense. <laughs> oh, getting, yeah. getting back to these, these sleeves, this is a very important thing during our telecast, okay? You know, they're made to put your thumbs through to keep your hands warm. Yeah. Do guys wear these? You know, I'll say I wear those when I run. All right, but I'm so not I feel sure. Good. I'm not sure if I've ever seen people my age wear them. Granted, because if I were to walk into school wearing those, I'd probably be like, Joe, what's that? Or stuffed <laughs> in a locker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's fine for me. I wouldn't fit in a locker. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Being what, six foot one, six foot two? Like six four. Yeah. Six four. Yeah. I, I have you sitting down size at six foot even. <laughs> um, well, yeah, actually, it's kind of comfortable. It's kind of warm. I said that when my wife brought it home, and I'm sure you watch your parents do crazy things. I said to her, I said, did this come from the men's department? I just want to make sure. <laughs> because I have my favorite team on the New England Patriots. So certainly, uh, we do things, all sorts of things up when we get up here. Fashion tips. We haven't started on food yet. But I will have to say, though, I will be visiting Schoolhouse on the way home to bring the bride home an ice cream. She'll be very happy with that. I will say, I'm not having an ice cream from Schoolhouse, but I get these low-calorie little Brayers things at Shaw's. They're to go, and there is Jake Doherty on the run to go into the secondary, and Jake Doherty is gone. Goodbye. Why am I even surprised? To the house, electrifying speed for his third touchdown of the ball game. He has 100. And 32 yard aggression, 232 yards on, on three touchdown carries. And that's not including any of the other rushes. Hey, hey, here goes your number. There we go. <laughs> all right. 34 to 7, all can, right. Can we lock do the hat trick? Let's see. We lock that kick is. It's uh, good. Through the uprights. <laughs> ah, I'm happy for you, Cam, but at the same time, Ah, come on, man. Uh, and we walk's extra point conversion caps off. A fantastic drive for the Red Devils, which was very short, only a couple plays. And set up by the big man, Chris Jones's interception. The big man picks it off. And it leads to seven for the Devils. Watch that. So we saw Chris Jones with the interception, and then earlier, we saw Patrick McAndrew, the junior defensive lineman, also force an interception. I'll tell you, if I am Andrew Sullivan, the quarterback of Wilmington, I would not want to go back home and when your parents say, how'd your game go? You say, oh, I threw an interception. To who? Oh, the interior defensive lineman of the Red Devils, Chris to Jones. A lineman. Yeah. As Wheelock's kick is up, plenty of leg. Really zips that one as they let it roll out of bounds. Smart play by the Wildcats. What looked to be number. Is that Ricky Citrano over there as a referee? 33 Thomas Baldy. Might be. I don't know, Dan. You know better than me. Uh, you know, the eyesight's not what it used to be. You know, <laughs> the eyes go quick. And that's going to be a re-kick. Cam Wheelock's going to get another shot at this. And what this ball game has been, 35 to seven so far. Dan, we spoke about this before. I, I'm, I stressed about it so much. The Wildcats only allowed nine points per game heading into this, but it really shows you that defense doesn't matter too much in high school football. It's all about having a dominant run game and a high-powered offense. Good kick, oh. nearly fumbled as he dropped that one, still picked up by Marino. Marino with a full head of steam, could turn this into a good return, and he is tackled down across the 40-yard line by number 75, Dalton McKinnon. As the Wildcats take over at their own 41-yard line. Well, the defense has certainly done a good job tonight, and I think that's really the story that comes out of here. Uh, with a big matchup next week against Melrose, um, that will certainly be a test. And 
Was that 51 or 50, 61? 51 to 13. Hey, what a time scored. <laughs> you know, I think I, I'd find the only thing that's funny is that you thought 61 instead of... <laughs> I thought I heard 61. But then you do the math and 51 is more... Now the question is, Dan, did Watertown score those in the fourth quarter? I don't care when they scored them. You know what? I have, a, I have a theory when it comes to coaching, and I know we hit some grumblings in front of us here. They were talking about they beat us 44-14, to 14, whatever it was. The bottom line is this. If you want to go and score 70 points against me, that's fine. Our job is to stop you. Yeah. And if we can't stop you, we need to get better. And, and that's my philosophy on it. I, you know, yeah, guess what? There comes a time where karma takes over. You don't want to have your, your first stringers in the game running double reverses or what have you. you know, don't go for two-point conversions at the end. But you know what? You stop us. Here's Sullivan firing across the middle. That pass is ruled incomplete. Apparently it hit the ground. It looked like that could be close as it fell into now, the hands of I'm gonna tell Ryan Colhane. If I'm the referees, I know what Coach McKay is thinking. I know what a lot of people are thinking. But you know what? It's incomplete. And there's a reason why you do that. And as you get, as you get a little older in life, you're, gonna, you, you're, you're a pretty wise kid. I can tell. I'm pretty good. But you know what? It's 35 to 7. That's yeah. it. That's you, you let that pass. one go. Yeah. You know, anybody can. Uh... So Sullivan getting a second chance of luck for receiver set. Here's the handoff over up the middle by what looked to be Marino, who picks up one or two yards on the carry. As the clock ticks below, six minutes remaining in the ball game. As they're going to face a third and seven. First two plays in, go for anywhere. Yeah, you know what? Um, and you know what? The worst thing in the world is not the, the, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world for Burlington playing a little extra defensive time. Um, there's always something you can learn. Dropping back, here's Sullivan, has the protection, fires, takes a late hit, and that pass is intercepted. Who else? Jake McCauley on the run back yet again. Showing a bit of the fullback skills on the return and down across the 38. Tristan, what a game from him. Tristan Champa threw that ball. I don't quite understand the reference, Dan, but nonetheless, McCauley with his... I believe second interception of the half. What a fantastic game for him defensively. Trying to go for his second consecu consecutive, rather, uh, MIAA All-Star season. Now here's Pena in the shotgun, sorry, rather in the pistol. Hands it off to Doherty, no surprise, who has an extra block Jordy up the sideline, and he is wrapped up by number one, Jordan Ola, right. Olatulu. Olatilu. Olatilu. Olatilu, or making, something like that. Making the touchdown saving tackles. It seemed Jordy had enough burst and speed to take it to the end zone if Olatilu didn't make the tackle. We have a flag on the play. So the Red Devils get hit with a 10 yard holding penalty around the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be unfortunate for Burlington. But Dan, first and 20. However, it's going to give them more room to just write out the clock. Well, that's the goal. You know, you sit there, you get a big game coming this week. You've got potential playoffs, and this win should almost, almost more than secure a spot. Now they're starting to think about a home playoff game where you and I might be up here again. Yeah. Although I could be, my services could be in, in demand somewhere else. <laughs> could be getting the uh, extra paycheck from running the scoreboard. Or on the sideline, working for a little MIA, as you mentioned. I go out know. and do some site management and make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Stacked line of scrimmage here for Wilmington. Trying to catch him off sides, five man rush. Here's Doherty on the carry, swarmed on the edges. And making the tackle up the middle is number 54, Dean Nally. 
I thought it was 50. Numbers. Yeah, I mean, Payne is doing a real nice job. They're keeping the ball on the ground. You can you, you watch him. Payne is going to sit there, and you'll see him pick the official up with the 10-second mark on the play clock. The back judge, which is the guy way down there to your left, he's going to throw his hand up. Okay, when he gets to the 10-second count, look at Payne. Payne is looking at him now. There's your 10 count. Payne just starts to sit there and think about it. He'll wait for him to put down. There's your five, and Payne is ready to go. So, And back to Doherty. Back J Doherty on the right sideline. Doherty has a block. Doherty, he is going with the Corral of blockers. Nearly over his own men, and leaps into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the night. Jake Doherty with a historic showing. Punches it into the end zone as the Red Devils are smoking the Wildcats. 57 yards on the run. As this offense, Dan, has been known for their big plays tonight, it seems like every score has been from at least 50 yards out. Sorry about that. Yeah, you know what, again, Wheelock's kick is good. Good job, Jay! Neither one of us took 42-7, did we? I don't think we did. <laughs> what was your prediction at the beginning of this? Yes. <laughs> I can't f seem to find it. I think you had 33-28. 33-28. For a while, it looked like it was going to be a 33-28 game. Yeah, and what most people pick to be a very close ball game, the Red Devils have made this into a fantastic showing. Proving doubters wrong with a convincing 35 point victory margin. So Doherty on his fourth touchdown run, clearly in double digits for touchdown runs and receptions for Doherty on this season. Has to be a contender for one of the best players in the Middlesex Freedom Division. I know that, I, I, I know that. That is crazy, 230 yards just on the rushing touchdowns. Fantastic stat provided to you by Dan. Now here's the return by Marino. Not too much steam on that one. And he's gonna be tackled near the 34 yard line. And did you see that hit in the back? I, I did, well, oh. no, he was hit straight on. Macaulay? Yeah. What are you talking about? He was hit straight on. Um, well, it was they, a good they really hit. Take, they should really take a look at him. He was slipping and falling as he was going down. He tried to change direction. He slipped on the turf, and him and the Wimbledon player went face to face. And there's McCauley going to take a second on the sideline as number 34, Phil yeah. Nurse, comes in. You know what? In. Yeah, Linda Bannon's a very, very uh, a good and veteran trainer. And, She's taking a peek right now. Here's Marino rounding the edges into the secondary. Dan Marino lowering the shoulder and she gets shoved out of bounds across the 40 yard line. Good carry from him. Peter Marino. So Marino providing a little bit of a spark, but too late. Well, they the said he was a pretty good runner coming in and he certainly has it has had his moments where he's looked like a very good runner, but there's other moments where the Red Devils defense have just eaten them up. Tackle to tackle, they've done a terrific job tonight on both sides of the ball. Back here, dropping back is Sullivan, and the handoff is given up the middle to Marino, who goes nowhere. Great interior pressure provided by Johnson Magata to blow up that play. And if Hakuna you... Magata! Hakuna Magata, if you want to. Stop any play up the middle. It's always great to provide that pressure. Andrew Woods also swooping in to make the stop, who has had himself quite a game at stopping the run in, providing a little bit of a push from the interior of the pocket in this one. Now here's Sullivan. Sullivan is going to take it on the quarterback keeper. Takes a low hit and dives across the 40 yard line. Bringing up a third down. Two minute warning. And that's gonna be the two minute warning as the Red Devils lead 42 to seven. If you're just tuning into this game, well, there's not much left to watch as you've missed a lot 
the Red Devils lead over the Wilmington Wildcats. I'm Joe Vicioni alongside Dan Brothers here on BCAT Sports coverage of Burlington Red Devil football. After the two minutes are up, the Red Devils will almost certainly hang on and pick up their fifth win of the season. Their third in a row. Now here is... White uniforms. White uniform alert. Number 20 on the carry. Kyle Valley, the junior running back, the third stringer. And that's going to force a fourth down in what looks look in what could be the last offensive attempt for the Wildcats. And Dan, it seems like a lot of people expected the Wildcats to perform better than they have done tonight. What is your review and grade for this squad? For the Wildcats? Yeah. Well, they still have a chance I to play. I'm going to give so. them an O. An O? Yes, and that's for overmatch. <laughs> uh, I think that if you look at this game here, um, as I'm setting out my texts and my updates, um, I, I think that they come in, they were overmatched. I think the Bruins did a great job um, in a lot of different aspects and a lot of different areas. And um, they, they deserve a lot of credit. I think that. As much as you want to sit there and, you know, trying to grade a, a performance like Wilmington might be tough, you can sit there and, and certainly grade Burlington to the high level because they played very, very well tonight. Um, and they deserve all the accolades they get. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of shirts out there right now, and that's what happens when you have a game like this. You get a lot of kids in the game who may not get in the game, and that's a credit to the first crew and the first stringers who did the job tonight. Dropping back. Here's the carry by the second nope. stringer. Thought it was 28, 88. Number 88, I haven't seen much of him ever. Uh, oh, Alex, Alex Mineta, Mineta on the carry. Oh, it's Alex, come on. And at quarterback is number 11, Matt Pinkham. The safety who had a couple plays and wide receiver. We had a couple plays last week, including an 11-yard reception late in the third quarter. Nonetheless, now he's dropping in a quarterback for the Devils. Here's Pena for receiver set. He's going to carry it himself. He makes turn. a man miss. Get and he down, is dropped kid. by the legs by number 42. See, if you're a quarterback, you've got to learn how to get down quicker than that. <laughs> All right. And the clock is going to continue to roll out. And, and that looks... To be it is the Red Devils hold on to this one in a convincing 42 to 7 win over the Wilmington Wildcats. And Dan, this has been a fantastic game for the Red Devils as it really provides them. This win really provides them with what could to be home field advantage later on in the playoffs. Yeah, at five and one, it's certainly gonna be enough, I think. Um you know, I, I, I'm part of that, that, that statistician process. So at some point in time on Sunday, I'll be sitting there and, and taking a peek at it and, and, and going through all the numbers. But this is one that really, really kind of, you know, gives them the advantage on getting a, not only one, but maybe two. You know, a win next week against Melrose is going to put them in the top three, you know, maybe two of, the, of, of, that, of that section. So... Um, you know, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, you get to that point in time, you know, with the advent of turf fields, it doesn't matter where you play. It doesn't matter whether you're playing in Burlington or if you're playing in Gloucester or if you're playing in, you know, it's a bus ride. But when you get there, it's all the same. Uh, the surface is the same. Uh, turfs don't have any real advantage like in the old days when you have fields, you know, get chewed up in the middle. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, I remember one year Lexington sat there on Thanksgiving you know, the trader place that you go to. Yeah. Um, and they had, there was a snow slash ice storm. And they, they sat there and they did nothing to the field. Because hmm. Burlington was a team built on speed, Lexington on power. Lexington ends up winning the game. And, it, you, know, you know, in the middle of the field was mud the entire contest. And so, you know, looking at the big at the big picture of things, a great win for Burlington tonight. Um, you know, they'll sit there and they'll they'll move on and have a chance to to wrap up, you know, second place in the league. And um, 
more importantly, a, a, a home field advantage in round one, where they might now, where they might now see a Wilmington team. There you go. Okay, we talked earlier in the contest about how it might be a, a double week against Melrose. Well, now it might be a double week, you know, two weeks after they had it once, Wilmington might come again. So, they'll remember this. Burlington will celebrate tonight. Wilmington will go home and kind of take their licks and try to figure out what happened. What so. a game from Jake Doherty and what ends up with the score 44 to seven. The Red Devils walk away with a convincing win and make their record five to one and remain undefeated at home. Thanks for tuning into this sports cast of Red Devil Football. I've been Joe Vicioni alongside Dan Brothers and we thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week against Melrose. Thanks. <laughs>